Carlfisher titrations are used to determine the water amount in a sample. Developed by the German chemist in 1935, the eponymous titration is the standard technique for this purpose and sees wide use in academic research and industrial settings. As a standard analytical technique, Carl Fischer titrations are routinely used for several applications. Two examples are highlighted here just to give a flavour. One is the area of food analysis, and you will pick up on this in your experiment as you will examine honey. The second is demonstrating how the technique is sensitive enough to be used at the forefront of new research. These authors describe its use for examining the release of water in these nanocluster sensors. Introductory information here and in the manual should be sufficient to prepare you for the experiment. But if you wish to find out more about Carl Fisher, this article by MacLeod is a good source. There's also lots of detail in this book by Schultz, with the relevant sections available on Google Books. As the manual explains, the Carl Fisher titration is based on the reaction of water present with iodine, as you can see in the overall scheme below. This reaction with iodine leads to two types of Carl Fisher titration. In the first, volumetric Carl Fisher, iodine is added to the titration cell with the other reagents until the current, which is caused by the presence of water, no longer changes, indicating that all water is consumed. Knowing the amount of iodine added means that the amount of water present can be deduced, using the molar ratio in the reaction scheme. Because volumetric titrations involve the addition of iodine directly, they tend to be used for samples where larger percentages are, of water are expected. For coulometric titrations, iodine is generated in situ from iodide ions, producing iodine which reacts with water. This continues until all the water is used up. This approach, the generation of iodine in small amounts, means that it can be used for analysis of samples with a much smaller amount of water present. In this experiment you will use both methods. The pre-lab techniques video talks through the steps to be taken. It's a very easy procedure, but at its core is the knowledge of the mass of the sample. You'll need to take care in determining this. Carl Fisher is a really great and easy way to determine water content in samples and the extent of its use means that this is a great experiment to have in your repertoire of laboratory skills.